Right, welcome to this video on lipids. So before we actually get into lipids uh, properly, let's take a look at fatty acids. So a fatty acid is a long hydrocarbon chain. That means it's made up of lots of carbon atoms bonded together uh, with hydrogens bonded to those carbons. Now there's two ends to the molecule you need to be familiar with. On this side here, you can see we have a carboxylic acid group. Carboxylic acid is COOH. So anywhere you see that COOH, that's a carboxylic acid group. And this is where the name fatty acid uh, gets the acid portion of its name. This is an acidic group. So that's on that side. And then over on this side, we have a methyl group. Methyl is CH3, so carbon with three hydrogens attached. Now this is the actual molecular structure of a fatty acid, but sometimes you see it, see it drawn just like this instead. So you still have the carboxylic acid group shown, that's quite important, and I'll discuss why later. Uh, but all of the rest of the molecule is just drawn as this zigzag structure, where every point on the zigzag represents a different carbon atom. Now this particular fatty acid here is a saturated fatty acid. It is saturated with hydrogen atoms. Um, this is uh, as opposed to an unsaturated fatty acid. So you can see here where we have a double bond between these two carbon atoms. That means we're lacking two hydrogen atoms here. So this is unsaturated. It is unsaturated with hydrogen. Now because of this, the molecule has a bit of a kink to it. So uh, because we're missing these hydrogen atoms here, it means that these uh, hydrogens here can get a little bit closer and these two push up away from each other. So it forms this kink. And again, where you see this simplified uh, structure instead, the kink is present and where you have the double bond, then you have this additional line in there. So you need to be able to uh, describe the differences between saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. So saturated means no double bonds, saturated with hydrogen, unsaturated means uh, one or more double bonds and is unsaturated with hydrogen. Right, let's see uh, how these are used to produce lipids then. So there's actually uh, many, many different lipids, but there's two you need to be familiar with. The first is a triglyceride. So tri means three, that means we have three fatty acids, and glyceride means there's a glycerol involved, that's this molecule here. So we have one glycerol with three attached fatty acids. Let's have a look at the bonding that's involved. So here's the glycerol molecule. It's actually a simple carbohydrate. You can see we've got uh, three carbon atoms, three hydroxyl groups, and then some additional attached hydrogen atoms here. Now, where we have these hydroxyl groups, these are going to react to the OH portion of the carboxylic acid group on each of three fatty acids. So again, you can see this OH group here is highlighted, this one highlighted. And if we have a look over here where they have reacted together, we uh, have lost a water molecule in each case. So one oxygen, two hydrogens are lost, leaving behind an oxygen atom. And the bond between this oxygen and the two carbons, this is known as an ester bond. And because we have lost water, this is a condensation reaction. So in order to form a triglyceride, we need three condensation reactions producing three ester bonds. The second type of uh, lipid that you need to be familiar with is a phospholipid. And on first inspection, it looks pretty similar to a triglyceride, but uh, we no longer have three fatty acids bonded. We only have two. And in place of that, we have this group up here. Now this is a phosphate group. So phosphate is PO4 and it's normally negative. So PO4 negative. Now this completely changes the properties of this molecule compared to a triglyceride. Now a triglyceride is completely uncharged, which means that it repels water or it is hydrophobic. There is still a hydrophobic region to a phospholipid, and it's where the fatty acids are. These fatty acids are still uncharged, so they still repel water, and so they are still hydrophobic. And we actually refer to these two fatty acids uh, leading off here as hydrophobic tails or the hydrophobic tail region of the phospholipid. 
On the other hand, the phosphate group, because it's negatively charged, that means it can interact with water, water being able to form hydrogen bonds because it's uh, polar, has a partially positive, partially negative region. The partially positive region will interact with this negatively charged phosphate group up here. Now this means that the, uh, the phosphate group is referred to as hydrophilic or water loving, so it will interact with water, it will form hydrogen bonds with water. Now, because of this, uh, we refer to the phosphate group here plus the glycerol molecule as being the hydrophilic head region of the phospholipid. So we have a hydrophilic head that will interact with water, loves water, and a hydrophobic tail that will not interact with water, it repels water, so it is hydrophobic. Now lots more on this in a later video uh, where we look at the structure of a cell membrane. Right, the biochemical test for a lipid, so this is the test for a triglyceride, it's called the emulsion test. It's a very simple test, you take your sample, you grind it up in a pestle and mortar, and then you add ethanol. You shake vigorously with the ethanol, and then you gently pour in water. And the result you're looking for is this white milky emulsion. If you see the white milky emulsion, then you have lipids present. The key term there is milky, that is the way to describe it. So no other term should be used to describe the white milky emulsion. Okay, here are the key terms for this topic. So pause now if you want to take a note of those. Loads more free resources on my website, pxsbiology.com. If you found this video useful, then please like, subscribe, and share.